Hello there guys, welcome to one of my live videos. So um, according uh, to uh, recent uh, reports uh, that I've just uh, recently uh, read, uh, Manchester United um, have uh, you know, travelled uh, to uh, Germany uh, for um, a meeting uh, with uh, Ralph uh, Ragnick. Now Ralph uh, Ragnick um, is um, the head um, of um, you know, sport um, and uh, the head um, of development um, of RP Lesbig reportedly he has been uh, linked uh, with a vacant uh, director's role um, at Manchester United. There's also been uh, reports um, as well saying that you know he could possibly you know uh, replace uh, Molly Gunnar Solskjaer um, at Manchester United because obviously you know there's a list of managers um, on our agenda anywhere you know who could uh, replace uh, Molly Gunnar Solskjaer at the football club because obviously reflecting him um, on our uh, disastrous uh, start to the season, Molly Gunnar Solskjaer um, is under um, intense. Uh, pressure um, at the football club uh, now um, obviously Ed Woodward um, had scheduled uh, this meeting because obviously he's keen on recommending um, a new uh, director um, of football in, um, at Manchester United I do also believe that Ralph Ragnick um, is also uh, linked there with a Bayern Munich uh, job because obviously you know the Bayern Munich uh, you know um, you know managerial uh, role um, is now vacant because obviously you know, uh, Bayern Munich had recently sat uh, Niko uh, Kovic um, following uh, their 5-1 uh, defeat uh, to uh, Frankfurt. But you know, during uh, the summer, you know, we was in search uh, for um, a director um, of football and that, and I did actually say, you know, that's uh, one of the structural changes, you know, that we uh, do uh, need to uh, see um, at the football club and that. But I actually recently said anywhere, you know, we need to see a variety of changes um, at Manchester United, you know, if we are to be back uh, to being um, a competitive elite uh, level of football club, you know, but there was quite a few former Man United players linked with the director's role uh, during uh, the summer, you know, the likes of Ferdinand was, was linked to it, like I mentioned, Darren Fletcher was Darren Fletcher was linked to it, I think also Patrice um, Everywhere was linked to it, obviously, you know, there was spec speculation um, about um, Edwin, uh, van der, Edwin van der Sarre the other week, but I did actually say, you know, it would be, you know, beneficial to recommend someone who knows the traditions of the club, you know, someone who would be reliable uh, to obviously um, our transfer business and someone, you know, who would have the right kind of philosophy for the football club you know to obviously you know recommend uh, the right caliber players uh, to uh, Manchester United but Solskjaer I think did say uh, was it uh, during uh, the international break he actually you know has defended he's defended uh, the club's uh, current uh, structure so obviously you know he insists you know that Manchester United uh, don't uh, really uh, need um, a director um, of football but that's been coming out uh, from the mainstream uh, media uh, today that Ralph Ragnick you know could possibly you know come uh, to Manchester United either as a sporting director or, you know, um, as a manager, you know, uh, to replace uh, Molly Gunnar Solskjaer. Probably it's very, very, um, if he was to come to Man United, I think, you know, it would be more, a lot more Im imminent, you know, he would get the director's role and, you know, obviously, you know, uh, become a manager um, and all that. Um, but that's uh, the latest uh, news uh, regarding uh, that, um, as I just uh, wanted to um, update you on. But um, obviously, you know, we've enjoyed um, a really, really um, bad uh, start to the season. Um, obviously, you know, we are enjoying um, our worst start to a Premier League season uh, for uh, three uh, decades and that. Um, and, you know, things um, have got to turn um, around um, at the football club. And I know a lot of Manchester United fans um, are very, very um, sceptical um, about uh, Molly Gunnar Solskjaer. Um, for me, he's not the right man, you know, to elevate uh, Manchester United uh, forward. Um, you know, definitely further um, more um, investment um, is needed um, in the squad and that. But I think, you know, uh, due to um, our inconsistency, it's going to be hard for us to get the right calibre players uh, to Manchester United next year. Um, I think Solskjaer has got around uh, five, you know, players on his agenda who he was interested in recommending into the football club next year but I initially said anywhere my own perception I think we need at least five to six more signings um, if we are to be back uh, to being um, a competitive elite uh, level of football club but like I said on my recent video you know Solskjaer has addressed um, our uh, as he has um, addressed um, his, ja his January transfer plans and that so I think we're looking to sign at least uh, one player um, in January but I do believe we'll be looking to do uh, the vast uh, majority um, of our uh, transfer business next summer so obviously um, you know our recruitment has got to um, improve in the next uh, couple of uh, windows because our recruitment's been very very poor you know, not just recently, you know, for several years, um, it's uh, been uh, very, very poor. So that's something else uh, that's got to um, improve um, at Manchester United and that. But for me, Solskjaer isn't the right man for the, for the job, you know. Obviously, like I recently said to you on my recent videos, um, obviously, you know, there's been talks of Max Allegri coming in, you know, Pochettino possibly coming in, you know, Chris Wilder, you know, it's very, very unlikely that Chris Wilder, you know, will come in. But Tony Cascarino recently said, you know, that... Um, 
Um, he actually you know, said that you know he would be the right solution uh, for Manchester United um, or Arsenal. Um, I think actually Max Allegri um, is our uh, primary candidate uh, to replace uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer at the football club. Um, also, Max Allegri um, is linked uh, with a, you know, a job at Arsenal because also you've got um, Ryan Ray under um, intense uh, pressure um, at Arsenal. Um, he's also linked with a Bayern Munich job and he's also obviously you know, linked uh, with a Man United job. And a lot of narratives uh, narratives have been going on about Max Allegri you know, for uh, several weeks now about him possibly you know, become Manchester United's next manager and if he is to be our next manager obviously you know, he will be our uh, fifth uh, permanent manager uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson um, era. Um, I don't think he'll obviously you know, be coming in as yet anyway because I think for this time being Man United you know, uh, will stick out with Oligan and Solskjaer. You know, we could keep him until January or keep him until the end of this season but like I recently said on my recent videos that he, def he definitely won't see out um, his three year uh, contract term at Manchester United because obviously when Solskjaer got the job permanently he had a uh, being uh, given him a free uh, uh, contract, but you know, would Max Allegri you know? Would do you think he would be uh, the right uh, candidate uh, for uh, Manchester United now? Obviously, you know, uh, some Man United fans will have uh, different uh, perceptions um, on it now. Obviously, Max Allegri um, has been recently, you know, studying um, English um, and obviously in preparation uh, for his uh, potential move. Uh, do you think? Um, you know, he'd have the right philosophy for Manchester Manchester United, you know, to, you know, make changes at the club. Do you think he'd be able to bring, you know, the right uh, calibre players in him and all that? Um, you know, he's obviously so far spent the entirety of his managerial career um, in the Serie A. Um, obviously spent the entirety of his playing career um, in the Serie A. But obviously emulated himself up over the years, you know, because obviously he started, you know, playing for small various clubs and obviously started managing uh, smaller various uh, clubs. You know, he did step down um, as Juventus manager at the end um, of last season. You know, he did end Enjoy a five-year tenure with Juventus, and obviously that's why he won the vast majority of his silver there. But he did resign as Juventus manager at the end of last season, so he's still currently a managerless now at the moment. So do you think he would be the right man to replace Mulligan and Solskjaer? Obviously, Pochettino is one of the managers, and that that that's on our current agenda. Don't forget, you know, before we recommended Mulligan and Solskjaer in to the football club, obviously Pochettino was actually you know our you know number one uh, priority uh, target you know to take the mantle on uh, at Manchester United but like I've said um, you know at the time we went in for him Pochettino uh, was reluctant to leave Tottenham I also want to add into the equation that obviously uh, Daniel Lever um, is, is um, a hard uh, negotiator so I just uh, want to uh, take that um, into account as well um, you know Pochettino is also in, under um, intense uh, pressure at Tottenham obviously you know because they've enjoyed them a really really um, bad uh, start uh, to the season now you know if we had to you know recommend and Pochettino win I do believe you know we'd have to pay around £32 million in compensation um Despite the fact that Pochettino doesn't have a release clause, I think, in his new five-year contract, because he signed this five-year contract term in the summer um, of 2018. I think he did um, anywhere. Um, but I think Pochettino, my perception, I think he'd do a good job at Man United. I think, you know, he'd be the right candidate. You know, he's good at developing young players. He's, you know, well Premier League proven. My only element of concern I've got about Mauricio Pochettino is that obviously he hasn't uh, won out um, in terms um, of silverware. But Pochettino, you know, he's... Been at Tottenham five years, he's now into his sixth season. I think this is only the bad season he's had with Tottenham. Um, obviously, before I was at Tottenham, he had a short tenure with Southampton. And before I was at Southampton, um, he was uh, with Espanyol and that. Um, but you know, there was quite a variety of managers on our agenda um, after the sacking of Jose Mourinho in December um, of last year. Uh, but obviously, our preference was to Solskjaer over them because obviously we saw that this was from our point of view, I'd say, you know, Solskjaer was a cheaper solution. Plus, um, you know, the traditions um, in that um, of the uh, football club. Uh, Chris Wilder, um, I've got to admire, you know, the, you know, you know what he's uh, done uh, for Sheffield United. I think now, overall, um, he's into his fourth season um, at Sheffield United because I think he started managing uh, Sheffield United in 2016. But, you know, he's emulated himself up again you know like I said he um, when he first took over Sheffield United was in, was in League One and he's now progressed them from League One to uh, six um, in the Premier League so you can say Chris uh, Wilder um, has done a um, really really good job but I'm, I'm very very I'm very, very sceptical, you know, that uh, Chris uh, Wilder, of course, you know, uh, will uh, kill me uh, leave. But like I said, who should replace uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer at the club now? Obviously, if Man United uh, do uh, sack him either way, obviously, you know, we're going to have to pay to sack him. And I do believe um, it will uh, cost uh, the club um, a substantial amount. Probably not to... 
we won't have to pay as much as we did, you know, to our Saka, Jose, Mourinho. Um, and that I think we'll maybe have to pay half, you know, to uh, get uh, rid of um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and that. But, you know, obviously, you know, Ed Woodward um, has had his um, own perception regarding Solskjaer. And he hasn't changed his perception one little bit. You know, he still believes that 100% he's backing Solskjaer. You know, he actually, you know, gave the sack verdict. Uh, he gave uh, he's a... Uh, Sack verdict um, on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer recently, and you know Ed Woodward insists he's uh, that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job um, is safe um, at Manchester United. Well, obviously not this uh, present uh, time um, anywhere because, like I said, some people believe us sacking Solskjaer at this present time or just before Christmas, you know, wouldn't uh, solve them um, a lot of their problems um, at the football club, um, you know, but. Obviously, now he's back um, under intense uh, pressure um, anyway, you know, following the, the 1 0 uh, defeat uh, to Bournemouth uh, last weekend. Um, obviously, you now um, in that four game period where it looks like Man United were on the comeback, you know, the momentum was building in that four game period. More confidence seems to be uh, more um, in the players. You know, we also showed them um, a lot of uh, tactical flexibility, and I did, you know, credit um, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer for that because for the vast uh, majority um, of this season, um, they have uh, been uh, criticising um, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, tactics because, you know, if for the vast majority of this season, um, he has uh, been uh, tactically uh, naive. Also, some of his substitutions um, have been questionable. It's there's also a question marks around him. You know, why is, why is he not yet started Mason Green from the start in the Premier League? Why is he uh, been uh, playing um, Ashley Young um, on a uh, regular uh, basis? But in that four game period, you know, Solskjaer did uh, try different sorts of elements, and they seem to be working, especially you know with a new formation. Because I thought we looked uh, better uh, with three um, at the back. Uh, but obviously now recently Solskjaer um, has reverted back to that 4-2-3-1 formation and we do know that that 4-2-3-1 formation um, hasn't uh, been uh, working. Um, I think a couple of times this season as well um, he has uh, gone there uh, with a 4-3-3 um, as Solskjaer but we did really, really well in that four game period, you know, we did well, we beat, we drew with Liverpool, you know, 1-1, you know, we're the first team this season in the Premier League, you know, to uh, take uh, many points um, off them, you know, we beat uh, Partizan Belgrade 1-0 away from home, you know, we beat Norwich away from home, come to comfortably 3-1 analysing it I think uh, that's uh, the best uh, performance um, of the season um, is Norwich and you know we had a good game um, in the Cowboy Cup um, against Chelsea you know uh, beat them uh, by uh, two goals uh, to one but I thought you know the f performance against Bournemouth was abysmal and it was totally a uh, comparison you know to them uh, current uh, three uh, games um, or so um, but it was very, very um, poor um, against uh, Bournemouth. I've, you know, I, I've got to say it's not you know the worst uh, performance um, in the season. But you know we're sitting a uh, ten firm in the Premier League at the moment. You know we're uh, just at around three or four points above uh, relegation. So you can quite frankly say at the moment we are facing a relegation battle. You know we are uh, ten points uh, behind uh, top four, so we're ten points behind Leicester um, and Chelsea, and we're eighteen points uh, behind Liverpool. But so I think the expectations are too high for Solskjaer and Man United because I said at the start of this season that our expectations this season uh, will be uh, to finish in that top four. Um, you know, so in that aspect, uh, we can't uh, you know get back um, into the uh, Champions League. You know, I do believe now from my own perception that the only route uh, to the Champions League is the Europa League because obviously if we win this game this evening against Pies and Belgrade, you know we have uh, qualified uh, for uh, the knockouts, uh, knockout uh, stages. You know, which is obviously now uh, really, really um, good. Um, Which is obviously now we're really, really am um, good in that, but you know I'm shell shocked in the position you know we're in because, like I said, reflects on the status, the potential, and the size, um, and the money that's been invested into this football club. You know we should be much more um, commanding a position you know than winning uh, now. We've only registered uh, eleven points. Uh, sorry, 13 points uh, from a possible uh, 33. We've only won three games in the league uh, this season um, out of um, uh, 11. So that's um, an actual you know, uh, embarrassment. But, you know, I my I expected at the start of this season that I said, you know, Man United won't win the league this season. We won't mount um, any uh, kind um, of title challenge up uh, because it is a long uh, process, you know, to get us back in you know, how we uh, want to be. But I, I do believe... Uh, Definitely now um, our squad um, is good enough uh, for um, a top four uh, finish. So if we finish out of the top four this season, then it's not excusable, basically. Um, because, you know, I credit Solskjaer again. You know, he did recommend three good players to the squad during the summer. 
you know, we spent a substantial amount, you know, we spent around, what, £148 million on Daniel James and wan um, on and, and on Harry uh, Maguire, and they've all, and they've, uh, all um, enjoyed their fantastic starts uh, to their uh, Manchester United careers, um, but they've settled in, you know, uh, really, really um, well. Um, you know, it was a shame that we didn't address all the problematic areas during the summer, you know, and I, I am... I am actually going to assure that we won't address all the problematic areas in January, but we'll at least look to get a forward or a midfielder in there in January. Then we'll look to address more of the problematic areas, you know, uh, next summer. Well, I'm hopeful, you know, uh, that we uh, can um, anywhere. Um, I'm hopeful, you know, uh, that we uh, can um, anywhere in that. But, um, you know, I think Solskjaer um, is still keen on continuing, continuing the policy um, of recruiting young British players anywhere, you know, like he uh, did do uh, during uh, the summer. But I still probably believe anywhere, you know, um, he will be um, here uh, by uh, January. And he has been assured that he will be given money to spend next year. I do probably believe that we're orchestrating on spending another substantial amount. You know, I think we'll probably spend from two hundred from between 200 to 300 million pounds like i said maybe we should orchestrate on being sensible with our recruitment next year you know because always spending big on players and getting them galactic old players doesn't always guarantee you success and that's been proven with manchester united in like six or um, seven years in that because was a lot of money's been spent in all the man jail areas since ferguson left also we've over overpaid for our players um, in recent years let's give you prime examples we overpaid for fred you know we paid just under 50 million pounds in last summer you know, you can say we overpaid for Aaron McGuire because, you know, we paid £80 million pounds for him. Obviously, you know, he's uh, the most um, expensive air defender um, in the world. But, you know, he's uh, you could say um, he has um, addressed um, our defensive air deficiencies. Um, at the time, we got Lukaku from Everton. I also believe that Man United um, overpaid uh, for him. Uh, but, you know, obviously, you know, we recouped the money uh, that we paid for him from Everton back in 2017 because he joined into Milan uh, during uh, the course term um, in the summer and that. And now, obviously, you know, next year... You know, we've got to look to get, you know, two midfield, two central midfielders in because we need to have depth firm in that uh, midfield. Um, you know, we definitely need to recruit with a player some for Ander Herrera. We also definitely need a striker, someone that can come in that can assure his goals, someone, you know, that can, you know, uh, be more effective in the box because we do look very exposed in that attacking line, you know, following the dismissal um, of Ronald Lukaku um, and Alexis Sanchez. Um the good news is, though, recently, you know, Rashford's rejuvenated himself. Obviously, you know, Martial um, has done well since um, he's regained their uh, full fitness. So, at least, you know, they've added a bit more of um, inspiration um, in that um, attack of their third um, in the pitch. But, you know, we still need to um, add um, experience um, up there. And we need someone who can also create more chances because we've been struggling to create uh, chances uh, this season. And, you know, this is probably the main factor reason why we haven't been uh, scoring um, enough goals and that, you know, maybe this... You know, some games where we have created chances in that, but, um, you know, but we just haven't been a uh, clinical enough um, in front of goal. And in that aspect, that replicates last season because last season, you know, we wasn't, uh, you know, we was creating chances, but we wasn't uh, ruthless enough um, in front um, of goal, uh, basically. Um, but, um, yeah, we've got to uh, start uh, scoring uh, more goals. And that's also, you know, um, another, another um, element um, of concern, if I'm going to be uh, quite um, honest with you. But, um yeah, and um, obviously, you know, we've got um, a lot of um, injuries, uh, so we'll take that um, into account. You know, we've had a lot of injuries this season, you know, we've still got um, injuries now. So anyway, in that aspect, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, has had to uh, make um, alterations in the squad. Um, obviously, Solskjaer confirmed, obviously, that Pob is out um, until uh, December. You know, he's not expected uh, he's not expected back um, until uh, December. Solskjaer did say there was a slight chance he could be back for the Sheffield United game, but, you know, uh, very, very um, unlikely. Um, because his injuries obviously is much is severe, more severe than we uh, first uh, feared in that. And Paul Pobino has uh, been a um, big uh, miss um, in that uh, midfield. But Solskjaer actually confirmed anyway that Fred will take Paul Popper's position uh, for um, a while. So I think Solskjaer is obviously now relying on Fred in that and and McTominay. I've also I've been impressed with McTominay this season because McTominay has done well. He has been a first team regular and I think reflect on his impressive performances anyway. You know he has uh, deserved uh, to keep um, his place um, in the team as McTominay. Don't get me wrong, you know, McTominay and Fred, you know, are not two world class uh, midfielders, but I think we've seen glimpses of how good, you know, Fred can be this season. There's still some aspects of his game where he definitely you know, needs to um, improve, but I still think Man United need to uh, give uh, Fred um, a bit more uh, time. Um, you know, um, obviously Matic is out uh, with a minor problem. Um, you know, he's out of injury. Solskjaer actually confirmed that Matic, Shaw, Luke Shaw, 
and Alex Tuanzebe, you know, will be a back um, after the um, international break. Bay's still out with an injury, he's out until the end of the year. Fossil Mensu still out, Diego Delotze still out with injury. You know, Delotze um, actually you know, sustained uh, quite um, a few um, injuries, you know, uh, this season. Um, but I do believe when he, you know, regains full fitness in that, you know, he will uh, get uh, more um, opportunities. Um, but, um, yeah, so we have uh, still uh, got uh, quite um, a few um, injuries in that, but I think, you know, after the international break, you know, the vast majority of the players that are now injured, you know, uh, should be uh, back, um, except uh, Paul Pogba and Eric Bay, And, uh, you know, uh, that's it, uh, basically. Um, you know... You know, um, and all uh, that. Um, but, you know, I know we've had a really, really bad season so far, but I still think, the, you know, like I've said, there's still certain players, you know, that have performed quite well, you know, like I said, McTomway's done well, Pereira's done well in some aspects of his game, I thought he did well in a couple of games before the Bournemouth game, he was developing well, obviously Pereira this season has been operating in that playmaker role, and I think he's played about eight uh, games uh, this season, Um Daniel James, um, he's also you know uh, done uh, really really well. Um, I think he's overplayed him to be quite honest with you because um, I was reading their reports uh, today, and it did actually say that uh, Solskjaer um, is concerned um, over the fatigue um, of Daniel James. So I think uh, reflecting on that, Solskjaer um, is obviously you no know, con well he's not considering. I think he's actually you know assured that you know Daniel James uh, will be arrested because Daniel James um, has played eighteen games this season from. 18 games this season uh, for club and country, but obviously he's played around uh, 15 of those games uh, for uh, Manchester United. Like I said, you know, there's still some aspects of Daniel James's game, what he does need to improve on, so you could say his crossing needs to improve. Um, you know, he's, maybe his finishing slightly needs to improve, but prior to that, you know, he's... You know, got every, he's 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 got everything else. You know, his uh, pace is unbelievable. But he's still a, you can still classify Daniel James as a prospect. You know, and I still believe you know we need to uh, give him a uh, time uh, to develop. You know, he is um, only uh, twenty one uh, years of age, so that's good for Solskjaer. guy. You know that he's obviously you not know, arresting because he has realised you know that he has um over you know uh, he, he has um over uh, played him basically. Um, but like I said, anyway, you know, we've got a lot of young players in the squad, you know, that are developing um, and trying to um, improve um, at Manchester United. And, you know, we have, um, like I said. And, you know, it's good that Solskjaer um, has got a lot of uh, trustworthy um, in his uh, young um, upcoming uh, players. Uh, like I did say, I've got some element of concern about certain young upcoming players. So what I mean in that aspect is that, obviously, not all of them are going to be become a fruition at Manchester United. And this is why I did take into account that we need to consider, you know, loaning uh, some um, of them um, out um, in January. But... I can definitely show that Mason Greenwood, Brandon Williams, Antoine Zebe will all become successes um, at the football club. Um, I've been impressed with Brandon Williams. Um, I think he's gained more of Oligan and Solskjaer's trust than that, you know, reflecting on his impressive performances. And I did say he will now uh, more of a first team uh, promotions. And a lot of Man United fans now do believe he's a better solution at left back uh, than Luke Shaw, despite the fact that Luke Shaw um, is our uh, first choice uh, left back. Can't really give a perception on James Garner at the moment. Um, I thought he did well in the reverse fixture against Pies and Belgrade. Um, you know, he did really, really well. That was his uh, full uh, debut uh, for the football club uh, by uh, the way. Um, but um, yeah, but Solskjaer, to be fair, has given the vast majority of the young upcoming players their chances this season. Also, you know, we have uh, got um, a lot of um, experienced uh, players um, in the squad. Um, but we have got a good squad, you know, it just needs to gel more, you know, certain players, you know, do uh, need to step up to the plate and that, because I still believe the vast majority of this Manchester United team uh, do uh, need um, reality check. But I think next year, despite the fact that a lot of players um, have left uh, since um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival, I think we need to consider getting rid of maybe four or, you know, uh, five uh, more uh, players uh, next year, if I'm uh, going to be uh, quite uh, honest with you. Um, because there's still players here that are no longer you know, uh, good enough uh, to represent uh, the football club. So I just want to uh, take that um, into the um, equation. But I said due to our inconsistency, you know, the vast uh, majority of the blame stems from the board. The board have been a liability for several years. We need to get rid of our current board and we need to recommend a new board in. I also do believe that Ed Woodward is a liability. He's been a liability uh, for several years, um, you know. But everyone, you know, um, is to basically, you know, blame for um, our bad uh, performances and negative, you know, results this season. Definitely, Oligan and Solskjaer is accountable uh, for uh, some um, of that. But, 
you know, for me, Solskjaer is not the right manager for Manchester United, as I do uh, keep uh, saying in that. Um, he did actually say, was it before the international break now, or during the international break, he was actually considering resigning, you know, to obviously, you know, pre prevent him uh, from getting uh, the sack um, and that. But, you know, Solskjaer adores uh, this uh, football club, and every Man United fan, including me, adores Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But, obviously, you know, we've got to be honest, he isn't the right man uh, for uh, Manchester United. And, like I said, my element of concern I've got about him, you know, he hasn't got any intuition on how to manage, you know, especially, you know, big clubs like uh, Manchester United, you know, despite the fact that he knows the traditions um, and that um, of the football club. Um, obviously, you know, Solskjaer's been here overall now for around 11 months. So he hasn't really had a long tenure at the football club. Obviously, he's lasted longer than David. What David Moyes did, because you know David Moyes, you know, only lasted around lasted around what ten months um, at the football club, and he's obviously you know had the shortest tenure you know since uh, the Ferguson um, era and that. And I did pinpoint out well, that was one mistake Alex Ferguson did make, and it was the only mistake he made was obviously you know recommended you know where David Moyes in and that, but. You know, maybe some people are still saying we should give him a bit more time. He's been here just under a year. He's been permanent manager uh, for around um, eight months now, and obviously for the vast majority of that eight months, you know, he's been uh, he's been uh, really really poor in that. You know, and it's totally comparison to what I saw in that three month period uh, when Oligan and Solskjaer uh, was uh, the interim manager, because my perceptions were different then regarding Solskjaer. What I saw throughout that three month period, I thought he was the right man, you know, to elevate uh, Manchester United forward. Uh, but obviously over the course of this eight month period, you know, my uh, obviously you know my perceptions uh, regarding him have obviously you nowhere know, started uh, to change and that. You know, I think the only reason the club are sticking with him now anyway is because obviously he's a, he's a club legend and you know he was a great player for Manchester United for eleven years. He flourished under Alex Ferguson's guidance and that. Um but disregarded being a club legend and obviously if it had been another manager, you know, they probably you know, would have uh, gone uh, by now because obviously in this generation, you know, managers, you know, don't uh, get uh, the time, you know, that uh, they would obviously, you know, uh, currently uh, like. Um, but I do feel sorry, for him, feel sorry for him in a way because I think, you know, uh, the club um, has put him um, in a very, very difficult position and I think some Manchester United fans fear that Solskjaer, you know, could replicate at Manchester United, you know, what he uh, did uh, do uh, with Cardiff. Um, you know, during his short tenure, you know, he actually ended up getting Cardiff relegated, so he only managed around 29 um, or uh, 30 uh, games uh, for uh, Cardiff. Um, I still don't think the club will go down. Like I said, there's too much money into the club. You know, obviously, you know, where the club um, is too big, so, you know, um, I don't uh, see uh, that um, happening if, if I'm uh, going to be uh, quite uh, honest with you. Um, but, yeah, he won't uh, last, uh, you know, um, at Manchester United, you know, uh, Solskjaer and that... Um, but, you know, he's not, you know, uh, just uh, the um, only uh, one uh, to blame, um, as you were more uh, no. But Solskjaer, you know, is our fourth permanent manager since uh, the Alex Ferguson era. And like I've mentioned to you recently that, you know, we haven't got the structure, you know, to keep uh, sacking uh, managers, despite the fact that three managers um, have already uh, been uh, sat uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson um, era and that. But I said, you know, regardless of who our manager is anywhere, you know, um, you could probably add into the equation as well, regardless of what players we've got, you know, they're never going to achieve in terms of what we achieved um, under um, Alex Ferguson. Solskjaer can't invoke Ferguson's legacy to save him at Man United. You know, Solskjaer does believe from his own perception that he's following Alex Ferguson's philosophy. Um, you know, the, the, you could say in that, Aspects, you know, they are compatible, you know, obviously, you know, Solskjaer wants to recruit more young British players like they do during the summer. Obviously, reflected back under the Ferguson area, you know, he developed um, a lot of uh, young players, you know, controlled a lot of the transfer policies, you know, controlled um, a lot of uh, the contracts and that. Um, and obviously, we had 20 odd years of success um, under um, Alex Ferguson. I know, you know, the success didn't, you know, s settle in straight away, you know, obviously, Ferguson didn't win out in his first four years. When we recommended him in from Aberdeen back in 1984, was it? Um, he didn't win out in his first uh, four years. But look after that four-year period, look what you know Alex Ferguson you now uh, went um, and accomplished. You know, it actually you know, was um, uh, unbelievable and that. Um, but you know, this is now a different area with different groups and different players. You know that we are uh, building, and we haven't been in the Ferguson era now uh, for um, almost uh, seven years. So you've got to uh, tear that um, into the um, equation. You know, a lot of money's been spent in Manchester United. You, know, you know, I think just around seven, eight hundred million's been spent in the last six or seven years, and that's not taking into account uh, what was uh, spent um, under um, Alex Ferguson. That so, like I said earlier, you know, we should be in much more of um, a commanding uh, position, you know, than we're in uh, now. If I'm uh, going to be uh, quite um, honest with you, um, 
you know, but um, as I did um, update you uh, guys um, earlier on, um, you know, there's a lot of players in our agenda uh, for uh, next year. Um, I think it's very, very probable, you know, that we're going to sign uh, Mario Mandzukic um, in January. I think he's going to be our fourth signing overall under the Solskjaer era. I think he's going to be our first signing um, in January. But the good thing is, you know, Mario Mandzukic um, is a cheaper solution. You know, we'll only have to pay around, uh, what, nine um, or ten uh, million pounds uh, for um, his services. Um, you know, my only element of concern I've got about is recommending Mario Mandzukic is that obviously, you know, um, he's uh, 33 uh, years um, of age. And you can say he's only got a couple of uh, years uh, left um, in his football in her career. And he's, you could say he's a good adequate replacement for Lukaku in that. Obviously, he's in um, a long-term uh, replacement uh, for uh, Lukaku. But um, I think we are going to get Mario Mandzukic in. I think Man United are prepared to offer him around an 18-month contract. Obviously, we're not going to offer him um, a long-term uh, contract. But it can, you know, sh it can... You know, sure, you know, Rashford and Daniel James and Martial at least how to be uh, more um, effective um, in the box and that. And I think he can assure uh, Manchester United, you know, uh, more uh, goals. And I think he can replicate Man United what he's done during his time with Juventus. Because during his time with Juventus so far, he has scored 44 goals in 162 games. Um, obviously, I don't think he's played a single minute of football this season since, you know, uh, the recommendation um, of uh, Maurizio uh, Sarri. But we inquired about getting Mario Mandzukic uh, towards uh, the back end um, of the summer transfer window. So that's one player on our agenda. Obviously, you do know there's been um, a lot of uh, talks um, about uh, Moussa Dembele uh, from Lyon uh, going on. Now, I think Solskjaer wants to bring someone else in um, after you know, he completes the sign of Mario Mandzukic. He wants to bring two forwards in. And I think Moussa Dembele, again, you know, he would be uh, the right uh, calibre player uh, for uh, Manchester United. Like I said, the beneficial thing about recommending him, you know, he's got that experience as um, you know, Moussa Dembele. He's played in the Premier League because he actually began his uh, senior uh, career with Fulham. When after he left Fulham, he went and had two good years in Scotland with Celtic. Was it three or two? Yeah, two or three years he had. Now, obviously, you know, um, he's at Leon. Uh, I think he's now into his uh, second uh, season uh, with Leon. But if he came at Man United, he can definitely replicate, you know, what he did um, all uh, them teams. Still got quite a few years left on his contract with Leon. He's under contract with them um, until uh, 2023. But Moussa Dembele um, is um, an out and out uh, number nine. We did go for the player during the course of the summer, like, you know, he wasn't one of our main priority targets. So, what I mean in that aspect, you know, we was uh, tentatively uh, linked with him. Um, but yeah, if we are to go in for him, I'm aware he'll cost the club a substantial amount um, of money. Um, we've obviously you know, got still got Jadon Sancho um, on our uh, current um, agenda. Again, I think he would be uh, the right uh, calibre player uh, for uh, Manchester United. Um, obviously, I think a few other teams have been in for him, you know, Arsenal. Liverpool, I don't really see how he would fit Liverpool's system. I think he'd fit Man United's system better than Liverpool's, if I'm going to be uh, quite um, honest with you. But there has uh, been um, a lot of uh, talks um, about that, you know, uh, going on. Um, you know, Jadon Sancho, we was in for him during the summer. You know, we also went in for Jadon Sancho, you know, back um, in January. Well, we actually identified him as our top priority um, in the January transfer window. But I think we, did, we didn't get him because um, with our failure uh, to qualify uh, for the Champions League, you know, Jadon Sancho, during his couple of years he's been with Dortmund now, his valuation has persistently grown. So if Man United had to go in for him next year at some point, you know, we'll probably have to pay in the excess of around £100 million. Dortmund paid only about £8 million in from City. But he's, he's had experience of playing in Manchester. He's also had experience of playing in the Premier League, which is beneficial. But um, he left City because, you know, he never really got a shot of first team um, opportunities um, at Manchester City. Um, you know, he's predominantly a right winner. He can also play centrally, and he's um, only uh, 19 uh, years of age. But I think Jadon Sancho is aware of this speculation, but I think um, he's um, unsure about um, his future and that. But Jadon Sancho... You know, he can create chances, he can score goals, he can provide assists, and he's the right calibre player, from my perception, uh, for uh, Manchester United. Um, obviously, you know, Christian Eriksen, um, he's another player um, on our uh, current um, agenda. Now, don't forget, we inquired about getting Christian Eriksen uh, towards uh, the back end um, of the summer uh, summer transfer window, but I think we actually you know, ended their uh, talks because we believe that his actual preference uh, is uh, to make a move uh, to uh, Real Madrid. Now, uh, Tottenham initially, during, at the start of the summer, uh, uh, they indicated out that he was for sale, but they wanted a substantial amount. I think they wanted in the region of around £130 million. They know, obviously, because of that, 
no team obviously no you know wanted to get him so top match you know initially yeah lowered her there asking price say around what 60 or uh, 70 million uh, pounds for christine Eriksson. uh christine Eriksson's current contract expires um ne uh, next year so he's got um, under um, a year uh, left um, on his uh, contract as Eriksson. Eriksson's enjoyed six season with six seasons with tottenham um, he's now into his seventh season with Tottenham. Tottenham paid around twelve million pounds him from Ajax. Was it uh, back in uh, two thousand and thirteen? I think he's predominantly um, an attacking uh, midfielder. But yeah, he's um, another uh, player um, on our uh, current um, agenda. Uh, we could possibly you know go back in for Bruno Fernandes in January or next summer because we actually you know you could arguably say we should have got uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes uh, during uh, the course um, of the summer transfer window because he actually you know was one of um, our uh, main uh, priority uh, targets. Um, James Madison, you know, he's another player um, on Oligan and Solskjaer's agenda. So I think Solskjaer, you know, has given Ed Woodard around um, a five man list, basically. Um, because Solskjaer's aware of probably how much, how many players Man United do need, you know, to get us back, you know, to uh, where we uh, do uh, currently uh, belong. Um, but, you know, uh, like I said, you know, Man United have made several mistakes in the last uh, six um, or seven years. And like I added into the equation, one of the mistakes was giving Ole Gunnar Solskjaer the job, you know, we should have never uh, given him uh, the job, um, I think we're giving it uh, to Werler, you know, we should have waited some point, some point until this season, or we should have waited um, until uh, the end um, of last season, but we give him uh, the job uh, too early, and we shouldn't have ever uh, given him uh, the job um, anywhere, you could say, you know, Man United, you know, made a mistake uh, by uh, getting uh, rid of um, Ander Herrera, because you could arguably say Ander Herrera was one of our best uh, players uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson um, era, um, like I said, Ferguson, you know, made one mistake and that was recommending Moyes in. You could say over the years, you know, there's certain players that we shouldn't have got rid of. Um, but you can say still anywhere that Solskjaer is still in the process of rebuilding this Manchester United team because obviously analysing the majority of this team anywhere, it isn't Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's. The vast majority of this team is Jose Mourinho's and Jose Mourinho did recommend 11 players into the football club. Now, obviously, you know, Solskjaer um, is inheriting uh, the vast uh, majority um, of them. Um... But yeah, but um, like I said, Man United Partners and Belgrade kicks off in half an hour's time. Uh, I said, you know, I'll be doing my match reaction uh, for uh, that uh, game uh, at some point uh, tomorrow. Um, obviously, if we win this game this evening, you know, we are, um, you know, through to knockout stages, like I mentioned to you. Uh, I'll give you some team news, didn't I? Uh, yesterday, the team news obviously now uh, would have uh, been um, announced. But Solskjaer confirmed Lindelof won't be playing. There was actually six players uh, absent uh, from training uh, yesterday, um, as it did uh, get confirmed. Um, but he's going to make um, a lot of um, alterations in the squad anyway because he sees like the Europe League and the Cowboy Cup as more of a chance, you know, to give the youngsters, you know, more, uh, you know, chances, and obviously, you know, uh, more um, experience in that, you know, which is obviously you now uh, very, very um, good. Um, and um, you know, I interpreted some of the stuff Solskjaer mentioned in his press conference and that, and you know, I interpreted some of the stuff Ash Young um, had mentioned. You know, Ash Young um, has obviously you now still uh, got um, a lot of uh, faith um, in Oligan and Solskjaer. You know, he's he ref he reflected on the one 0 defeat uh, to Bournemouth, and he actually says, you know, it won't have a bad effect um, on the players. He says, you know, it won't dampen our spirits, and he actually compared um, uh, Ferguson um, and Solskjaer did Young, and he actually believes that. You know, Solskjaer um, is, uh, has uh, revived uh, Ferguson's spirit um, at Manchester United. You know, this is obviously Ashley Young's perception. Everyone obviously, you know, has um, a different uh, perception, you know, like I uh, currently uh, said in that. Um, but, yeah, so after the game this evening, you know, we do go up against uh, Brighton um, on Sunday. Uh, I did say this evening, anyway, Solskjaer will rescue players for the game against Brighton um, on Sunday. Then after Brighton, it's uh, Sheffield, well, it's the international break. Then it's uh, Sheffield United um, after the um, international uh, break. Um, but, um, yeah. And uh, that's uh, mainly um, everything uh, to update you with. So I just wanted to, you know, do this video for you guys, you know, to give you an update on uh, Ralph uh, Ragnick. Um, like I said, he's a head of sport and um, development um, of, you know, Lesbig and that. Um, you know, Manchester United um, have uh, travelled to Germany, you know, for a meeting with him. Uh, obviously, like I said, um, Ed Woodward um, had scheduled uh, this meeting and that because he wants to recommend a direct to the footballing. Um, but, um, yeah, so that's uh, according uh, to uh, recent uh, reports. So, anyway, guys, drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider uh, subscribing, um, as always, and take care. God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.